The giant spider Shelob is a very mysterious and, in my opinion, terrifying character within Tolkien's universe. Many questions often come up about who she is and where she came from, even more so after the release of the Middle Earth Shadow of War game, as she was of course featured in that game as a human female that could transform into spider form. Now, while that game is obviously not canon, there could be some truth in it. So let's take a deeper look into who and what Shelob is. To understand what Shelob is, we must first look at where she comes from. She was the offspring of the great spider Ungoliant, who is, as Tolkien described, an evil spirit in spider form. Not much else is told about where Ungoliant comes from, other than she is from before the world. She is actually one of the only characters in Tolkien's writings, along with Tom Bombadil, that does not have much of a clear background, or at least an explanation of how they came to be. Anyway, Shelob was one of her children, and they made their home in the mountains of Ered Gorgoroth, also known as the Mountains of Terror, which was a range of mountains in Beleriand. It's said that no one could pass through these mountains. The only person to ever do so was the hero Beren, who never actually spoke about his terrible journey. However, Ered Gorgoroth would not be the home to the spiders for very long, as the Valar had decided to attack Morgoth, in a battle so great that it sunk Beleriand, marking the end of the First Age. The battle was of course known as the War of Wrath. We will have a video about these battles coming very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. So in the Two Towers book, when we first get a description of Shelob, we learn a few important facts. Tolkien wrote, There age long she had dwelt, an evil thing in spider form. Even such as once of old had lived in the land of the elves in the west that is now under the sea, such as Beren fought in the mountains of Terra in Doriath and so came to Luthien upon the green sword among the hemlocks in the moonlight long ago. How Shelob came there, flying from ruin, no tale tells. For out of the dark years few tales have come. But still she was there, who was there before Sauron, and before the first stone of Baradur. And she served none but herself, drinking the blood of elves and men, bloated and grown fat with endless brooding on her feasts, weaving webs of shadow, for all living things were her food, and her vomit darkness. Far and wide her lesser broods, bastards of the miserable mates, her own offspring, that she slew, spread from glen to glen, from the Ethelduath to the eastern hills, to Dol Guldur and the fastness of Mirkwood. But none could rival her, Shelob the Great, last child of Ingoliant to trouble the unhappy world. Now, the most interesting line from this passage to me is how Shelob came there, flying from ruin, no tale tells, for out of the dark years few tales have come. Now, while we do not know if the ruin that this line refers to is the War of Wrath and the sinking of Beleriand, it seems extremely likely. It also states that she was in Mordor long before Sauron and the Tower of Barad-dûr, so it's safe to assume that she was basically born and raised in Ered Gorgoroth, then fled to Mordor and feasted on a mix of men and elves to survive. We can also assume that she did the same as her mother and ate her offspring, but let's not talk about that. The last thing I want to point out from this particular quote is that it interestingly says that she is also an evil thing in spider form. So to me this could potentially mean that she has the ability to shapeshift. It's not confirmed as we don't see or hear of her in any other form, but it certainly seems likely, so maybe Shadow of War wasn't too far-fetched after all. Now when we take all of that information into account, we can get a rough estimate on her age. If she was born sometime in the First Age, she would be at least 6,500 years old during the War of the Ring, which would make her one of the oldest beings alive at that time. So, most likely due to Sauron's eventual arrival in Mordor, Shelob's supply of elves and men to feast on grew short. Fortunately for her, Sauron seemed pretty pleased by her presence at the entry to his new lands. What better creature to scare off any intruders than a giant spider? And as for Sauron, he knew where she lurked. It pleased him that she would dwell there hungry, but unabated in malice. A more sure watch upon that ancient path into his land than any other that his skill could have devised. And orcs, they were useful slaves, but he had them in plenty. If now and again Shelob caught them to stay her appetite, she was welcome, he could spare them. And sometimes as a man may cast a dainty to his cat, his cat he calls her, but he owns her not. Sauron would send her prisoners that he had no better uses for. 
and report brought back to him of the play she made. So they both lived delighted in their own devices, and feared no assault, nor wrath, nor any end of their wickedness. Never yet had any fly escaped from Shelob's webs, and the greater now was her rage and hunger. So though she did not serve Sauron, he had essentially an unspoken agreement, that she would stay there, almost unintentionally protecting Mordor, and he would send orcs, or prisoners, to her for her to feed on. Now, for many reasons, one being that she does not serve Sauron, some people have speculated if Shelob is evil at all, or just a creature that eats to stay alive, which would be no different to most humans. Yes, she eats and kills living beings, but is that evil if it's done for survival? No, not really. However, Tolkien wrote, Little she knew of or cared for towers or rings or anything devised by mind or hand, who only desired death for all others, mind and body, and for herself a glut of life, alone, swollen till the mountains could no longer hold her up and the darkness could not contain her. Now, in my opinion, someone whose only desire is death for all others is the epitome of evil. So what was the ultimate fate of the giant evil creature? Well, we don't know for sure, but the one final passage that we do get about her tells me that she survives, but it's certainly left open-ended for the reader to decide. Shelob was gone, and whether she lay long in her lair, nursing her malign and her misery, and in slow years of darkness healed herself from within, rebuilding her clustered eyes, until with hunger like death she spun once more her dreadful snares in the glens of the Mountains of Shadow, this tale does not tell. Now, if we compare her story and characteristics to her mother Ungoliant, then there could be another potential outcome for her. Ungoliant was said to have been so gluttonous that she eventually became responsible for her own demise, essentially being so greedy that she devoured herself. Now, if Shelob was partially blind and injured after her battle with Sam, and maybe unable to successfully hunt for food, then perhaps the same thing happened to her. Who knows? I would absolutely love to know your theories though, down below in the comments. My question for you guys today is this. Do you think that Sheila was actually a shapeshifter, or do you think she was just a giant spider? Let us know in the comments down below. Okay, that's it from me today my friends. Time, as always, has come to thank our patrons. A big shout out goes to the members of the highest tiers, Kevin, Abram, Mac, Lofindel of Gondolin, The Sheath, Denver Steel, Gregory, John and Andrew. We can't thank you all enough for the support you've been giving us on our upcoming short film project. We cannot wait to continue updating you on the future developments and then get to work on shooting. If you want to support the project or our channel, you can do so over on our Patreon. There's plenty of tiers that you can pick from depending on your budget, so check that out in the description down below. You can also check out some of our exclusive Middle Earth inspired merchandise Again, link is in the description below. Finally, don't forget to check out our other channels. We have The Sixth Ranger for some nostalgic Power Rangers lore and The Tabletop Alliance if you're interested in seeing us play some Middle Earth strategy battle game or occasionally even talk about Warhammer 40,000. Once more, the links are in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.